Chris Zaccarella, Independent Alliance Advisors. Good morning and thank you so much for joining us. Good morning, thanks for having me back. Uh, Chris, I was wondering what are your expectations for markets in February so far? Um, very positive final trading session of January, but very difficult beginning to the year. Yeah, that's a great way to put it. Uh, 2022 is clearly shaping up to be a much more difficult year than 2021 or even 2020 for that matter. We've got a lot more headwinds. The Federal Reserve Bank in the U.S. is looking to raise rates at least four times, potentially more. Uh, they're going to stop buying bonds and then eventually begin reducing their balance sheet. So all of that means a lot more volatility. The tailwinds that we had in the past couple of years in terms of monetary and fiscal stimulus are now being withdrawn. So ultimately, we should expect a lot more volatility ahead. We had a great finish to the month of January, but the month itself was very disappointing and, and one of the worst down months since the COVID crisis began. So what we would say for investors is to get back to those more diversified portfolios, get a little bit more cautious. Do not think that this dip that people have been buying is the final drop in the year. We think there's more volatility ahead. Do you think that actually they were pretty good buying opportunities specifically if we had to focus on tech? Technology is an interesting case. A lot of the higher price to earnings ratio stocks or stocks where there aren't earnings yet and people are hoping in the future they'll develop into larger companies, I think those still remain out of favor. But for those really large companies with tech earnings, your Apples, your Amazons, your Googles, um, even some of the chip makers, it was a good buying opportunity. It all depends on your time horizon. If you're looking to be a trader and make money within weeks or months, it's, there still may be some trouble ahead. But if you're looking to build a portfolio over the next three years, five years, 10 years, absolutely fantastic buying opportunity. I was wondering, considering, of course, um, the, the Fed's monetary policy, which is going to be way more um, hawkish compared to the last year, do you expect even more severe correction? It's hard to predict how much the market will sell off again in the future, but I, we do predict that there will be more pullbacks. So what we saw in January is potentially a 10% drop in the S&P 500, the main U.S. broad index. But within the NASDAQ, that, he, that tech-heavy U.S. index, you saw a drop of as much as 15% from peak to trough. So we're not necessarily predicting a larger drop later this year, but we think drops up to and around that amount are likely for the rest of the year. So I think you'll see Again, volatility on the upside and the downside. You'll see further drops in the future, but you'll also see the market rise. We do believe for 2022, as long as the U.S. stays out of recession and hopefully the global economy stays out of recession, which is our base case, that ultimately stocks can keep moving higher. But again, there's going to be a lot of volatility along the way. It won't be that one-way ticket straight up like you saw last year. So the, the big winner is going to be volatility once again. I was wondering what's signaling the bond market and do you think that we can start talking about bear flattening of the yield curve? The bond market has been acting a little bit differently than the stock market. It, you could say it's been ahead of, of what's been happening. And ultimately, the bond market was repricing for a more, uh, a more hawkish Fed, as you mentioned, and so rates were moving higher. But recently, they've been coming back down. I think people in the bond market are trying to decide what's the greater threat, inflation and potentially economic growth, which would move rates higher, or the possibility of the Fed becoming too hawkish and slowing things down. And that's when you're seeing rates go a little bit lower. For us, we think we're going to be in the, somewhat of a trading range for the rest of this year. You could see yields go as low as, as uh, 160 and yields go as high as maybe two and a quarter, even higher than that in the 10-year Treasury note, if things get out of control from an inflation point of view. Most likely, it'll stay within that range because ultimately the Federal Reserve is going to fight inflation and do whatever it takes. The question is, are they going to be moving too slowly? And so we do think the possibility for that flattening makes a lot of sense because as short-term rates move up, which we think is a certainty, it's not so certain whether or not long-term rates will move up. And again, that, that the long-term rates reflect some of the concerns that the Fed will be too aggressive. So we do think a flattening makes sense at this, uh, at this time. That would be our base case. I was wondering, what are the major risks for markets at this point? From one side, we have inflationary pressures to the upside, uh, and on the other side, uh, slowing economic growth, despite, of course, the great numbers that we saw a few days ago. So uh, what do we have to look at mostly, most importantly? Well, I think the most important factor is going to be the Fed itself. And so I think economic growth, yes, it will slow down from extremely fast levels to probably more reasonable levels. We don't believe there's a threat of economic growth slowing to zero or going negative. We don't see that recession threat out there. We think, if anything, uh, GDP growth in the U.S. could slow to 2.5%, maybe even 2% on an annualized rate, not necessarily the rate for this year. We think the rate for 2022 as a whole will be higher than that. But ultimately, 
economic growth that's slowing but still appreciating at our what are considered more normal levels is a good thing and so we don't see that as a risk what we do see as a risk is the federal reserve either moving too slowly and inflation getting a little bit ahead of itself and out of control which will force the fed to move more quickly or the fed just moves more quickly right off the bat we think for right now the fed is going to continue to move a little bit cautiously they'll move in a measured pace they'll continue to raise interest rates they'll stop buying bonds all of which they've indicated and then they'll allow that balance sheet to run off but if inflation continues to run hot they're going to have to either increase the pace of of interest rate hikes so more than once per quarter or they're going to actually outright sell bonds so we think the biggest threat to investors will be the federal reserve intervention and therefore we'd be looking more closely at the inflation rate a little bit less closely at slowing economic growth at least at this point in the cycle and a final take, Chris, pretty interesting dollar index over there today, uh, heading south, of course, once again, three tenths of a percent lower at 96.33, euro dollar 1.1265, up about three tenths of a percent as a consequence, of course, of, of weaker greenback. I was wondering, what's the outlook over there? How do you see the dollar index? Because it's extremely important also for uh, the commodities dynamics. Absolutely. The dollar is something that's been so difficult for most people to predict. You know, we were exp- a lot of people were expecting the dollar to weaken for all of last year. If anything, it strengthened. You look at the dollar index more broadly, you look at euro dollar in particular, and you're really seeing that dollar strength. Yes, we're seeing a little bit of a, a, a bounce back in terms of the dollar starting to weaken slowly. But ultimately, the big story is that the dollar has been a lot stronger than I think most people would, would expect. And for that reason, I think you have to look at the currency as something that's going to be um, strong in the two extreme scenarios. So if we get into a bad markets or economic situation, there'll be that flight to quality, treasuries get bid up, dollar gets stronger. Likewise, if we get into a situation where there's a lot more growth than expected and money flows back into U.S. stock markets, whether it's in the S&P 500 or the NASDAQ, again, the dollar gets stronger. It's those in-between cases where we're either seeing um, not as much of a flight to safety, but more of a, a, a cautious approach, or we're seeing economic growth slowing, um, but, but continuing to appreciate. So in all of those cases, we would expect the dollar to weaken slightly. But again, if we hit either of those risk scenarios on the downside or on the upside, the extremes, you can see the dollar strengthen again. So that's been the toughest call for the last couple of years. What will happen with the dollar? We do believe that this year the dollar will start to weaken and we will stay within that range. But if things change drastically one way or the other, that's when you'll see dollar strength again. And so that's why I think it's such a good indicator to watch. That could be the canary in the coal mine in terms of looking for a a sign of which way markets are headed. I was wondering, do you also um, look at European markets or are you particularly focused on U.S. markets and U.S. stocks? We've got uh, a diversified global portfolio. We very much care what happens in Europe, what happens in Asia, and even in emerging markets. We're predominantly focused on the U.S. Most of our, all of our investors are U.S. based, and most of our inv- investors have a, a U.S. bias. But we do look internationally as well. All right. Thank you very much, Chris Zaccarelli, CIO, Independent Advisor Alliance. Thank you so much for joining us, and have a great day ahead. Thanks. You too.